Hello and welcome to Alice Springs Airport and later this morning I'm flying up to Darwin with Qantas in our Boeing 737. Now the airport at the moment is interesting for two reasons. Firstly it's rained a lot so everything's very green so hopefully we'll get some good views on takeoff. But this airport is also being used as a storage ground for a whole lot of grounded COVID aircraft. So there's actually a whole fleet of Singapore A380s and 777s here and we should get a view of those as we take off. Um, but first let's uh, check in, put my mask on and we'll go and have a look at the lounge. I make videos about planes and slightly relevant geological observations about dirt. If you're into trip reports from flights around the world and tours through significant aircraft in museums, then check out my channel and subscribe. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. I arrived around 90 minutes before my 0935 departure up to Darwin and things were still pretty quiet. I suspect that's because I'm used to larger airports where you have to arrive earlier to pass security and to get to your gate. The locals probably know that you can pass all of these in just a minute or two here. Not to worry, as it's a great airport considering it's in the middle of the desert and having a Qantas club gives you somewhere to arrive early and relax in. Straight ahead is the Qantas check-in area with the premium line down the end for business class passengers and those with status. Having dropped off my bag and printed my boarding pass, I was off through security, although before that there's an interesting 1920s Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost on display. This was owned by the local Canalan Airways, which was converted to a ute and then used to drag logs along the runway to keep it smooth-ish for aircraft. While Rolls-Royce went on to be known as the pinnacle of luxury, initially they just built big, solid and reliable cars. So kind of like Land Rover Defenders, but actually reliable. Once through security, there were a few shops open with an eatery straight ahead and on the right was a shop with the usual well-priced books, magazines and touristy bits and bobs. On the far wall is the entrance to the Qantas Club, which is open to members as well as gold, platinum and business class passengers. Although it didn't open until 60 minutes prior to departure, so there were a few of us just loitering around, although it eventually opened up. Inside, it's a reasonable place to sit and wait for your flight with plenty of seating. There were showers, although they were closed due to the COVID cleaning rules. There's a pancake machine, a fridge full of soft drink, beer and wine, and a few self-serve breakfast options. There's also a coffee machine, which I utilised and sat down in the corner and waited for our aircraft to arrive. Eventually the flight was called and I started the rather long walk out to our aircraft. Now remote gates aren't much fun in extremely hot or cold weather although today was perfect for flying and perving at aircraft. Our jet today is VH Victor Zulu Oscar, a Boeing 737-800 which first flew in 2011. It was named after the goldfield city of Bendigo in regional Victoria. You'll notice a whole lot of aircraft in the distance although I've got more footage of that coming up shortly. Our aircraft has been repainted in the new Roo livery and I personally think it looks fantastic, even if the Roo on the tail did lose its paws. Comment below and let me know if you're a fan of the new colours or prefer the old one. The first three rows are business class, although to be honest for such a short flight like this, points and cash are best saved for long haul business class flights. My seat for Alpha was first up in economy and comes with extra legroom which is always a bonus. Now a highlight for me is always overhead air vents. When you've got as much hair as me, you can easily overheat so they come in handy there. There's a huge amount of legroom and under the armrest is the fold out table. Further down is the in-flight entertainment screen which did turn on although mine wasn't actually working and next to that are power plugs and USB ports that you share with your neighbour. Particularly for four hour flights between Darwin and Sydney and across to Perth, power plugs are really important. And out the window, you've got this great view of the wing and engine. Now I know there are greater problems facing Western civilization, but there's so much legroom, I had to invent a new way to reach my bag. Everyone was on board and we prepared for departure. As we taxied to the runway to take off towards the south, we got a glimpse of the aircraft in storage. It's really sad to see these incredible pieces of engineering grounded. 
During better times, they'd be transporting thousands of excited passengers and business peoples all around the world. I guess the good news is that it's only a temporary storage ground, unlike some of those in the US. Uh, so all of these aircraft will be returning to service at some stage. And with vaccination rates improving, I feel like the worst is probably behind us and hopefully things will be back to normal next year. Although these are just machines and we really have to recognize the human cost of everything that's happened. Everyone in the travel, tourism and hospitality industry has been doing it tough. So if you can, definitely get out and support these guys when it's safe to do so. It was great to see Uluru chockers with travelers. In fact, there was no accommodation, so I had to sleep in a van, which was interesting. That ridge you see in the background is part of the McDonald Ranges, named after Richard McDonald, who was the governor of South Australia. The traditional owners called it Chiritja, which is probably mispronounced, and this particular ridge runs east and west of the town. In fact, it acts as a bit of a windbreak for the city. Here's a final look at all the aircraft in storage at the airport and the city itself. Now this is quite an interesting change in scenery. There's quite a clear line where the dirt changes colours and that's why it's called the red centre. Because Australia sits in the middle of a tectonic plate as you can see here, there is no new ground or dirt coming up from underneath. So everything you see now is actually really old. It's also high in iron and that rusts so the red tinge is literally rusty dirt. You can think of the entire Red Centre as thousands of Holden Chimeras the day after the warranty runs out. And because it's rusty dirt, it's not particularly fertile, hence why not much grows on it. Just below the engine cowling is the Sturt Highway which runs right down the centre of the continent from Darwin to Port Augusta in South Australia. Qantas did suspend the in-flight entertainment when everything was grounded, although apparently that's now turned back on. But on this flight, I kept getting this error message the crew reset the system and assured me that the entertainment was meant to be back up and running, although again it failed. They offered a different seat, although I read instead. I was just curious for the purposes of making this video. There was also a small snack, which was smaller than I was expecting, although I've since discovered that there's a pause in serving breakfast from around 9 in the morning until midday. But the Wi-Fi was up and working with a barrage of updates on my Instagram account, which by the way, don't forget to follow me, etc, etc. As we trundled along at 40,000 feet, the terrain below became slightly greener and there was more clouds as the moisture increased. Just north of Catherine, we started our gradual descent down into Darwin. The terrain up here is certainly a lot greener and more lush than down south, although both regions still have their own unique beauty. If you check out my vlog on board the GAN from earlier this year, you'll get to see even more stunning views and examples of the different terrains highlighting the diverse beauty of the Australian continent. You may have noticed some um, blemishes on the engine cowling. These are from corrosion blending, so essentially the removal of rust. My understanding is that when some of these were put into storage last year when COVID really closed down domestic travel, there was moisture trapped inside the wrapping that went around the engine and it caused this. We spun around north of Darwin and landed towards the south. By the way, the views landing into Dal were really impressive and I'll link to a full and unedited video in the video description below. So how was the flight? Look, it was perfectly fine. We arrived a little ahead of schedule, the crew were friendly and the snacks adequate. The views were also really impressive and I'm just glad to get back up in the air again. Thanks for joining me on this 1300 km journey from Alice Springs to Darwin. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks and I'll see you another time.